today, this morning. Amen. And so we just ask you to join us right where you are and begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says that he is worthy and that he is fighting for you and he fights for me. Amen. So he's worthy of our praise today.
how many of y'all blessed to know that he continues to fight for you? Amen. And so that's why we're not ashamed to shout the name of Jesus because we know that it's in that name that we have victory. It's in that name that we have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that relationship calls us and draws us unto him. And so just right where you are, just begin to worship his holy name. That he calls for you and he calls for me. And would we respond to the name and to the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we worship you. Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come.
good morning. I'm so glad you've decided to join us on today. And uh, it's really a privilege and an honor to be able to share with you God's word. And uh, thank you so much from all of us here at the Experience Church for uh, your willingness to spend some time with us here throughout your day. I really do pray that God's word reach you right where you are and that it not just reach you, but it, it, it allows uh, or that you would allow it to transform your life in such a dynamic way that uh, you won't be the same after today. Hey, you know what? Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm in the book of Second Kings chapter 6 today. And uh, one of my favorite memories of my son's childhood was uh, when we went to a Walmart one time during the Halloween season and uh, there was this I think it's hilarious because there was this Grim Reaper hanging at a Walmart uh, at the checkout counter, and, and it was a really, really large display, right? But they had him up hanging above all of the uh, checkouts, and uh, my son had to have been like maybe five, four years old, somewhere around there. And uh, it, I, it seemed like it was with his, like, the loudest voice that he could possibly have. He points at the at the Grim Reaper, and he says, look, Dad, it's Jesus, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I thought it was hilarious because it obviously wasn't Jesus, right? But, uh, you know, I, I tried to explain to him, man, that's not Jesus. You know, that's that's a grim reaper, right? But my son, he wasn't buying it. Why? Uh, it's because his perspective was his reality, you know? And uh, your perspective, if you don't know by now, your perspective will always shape your reality. And uh, in Second Kings chapter 6, as I kind of set this up for you today, uh, the Syrian army is coming after Elisha, right? Because Elisha had been getting downloads from heaven, if you will, and he was giving that information to the king of Israel. And as a result, the Syrian army couldn't get to the king of Israel, so uh, instead they come after Elisha. And in 2 Kings chapter 6, and uh, we'll read verses 15 through 17, here's what the Bible says. It says, And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Look at verse 17. It says, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You know, Elisha was a miracle-working prophet who knew the power of God. For example, he saw Elijah get taken up to heaven. Uh, one time, Elisha prayed over a widow's oil, and as she kept pouring, the oil kept coming and kept coming. And uh, there was another time where he prayed for the dead Shunammite woman's son. He came back to life. So Elisha wasn't a stranger to God's abilities. So now he and his servant are facing a battle. There's this army surrounding them, and here's the thing. If I was Elisha, knowing what I know about God, I probably would have prayed, God, smoke all these fools, man. <laughs> like, it's not like Elisha doesn't have the faith for it. He's seen God do some really awesome things, but that's not what he prayed. He prayed instead over his servant, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And I believe that for most of us, what's beating us isn't what we're facing. It's what we see when we're facing it. And so Elisha understood the power and the importance of perspective. And in this story, especially the right perspective. And more important than the battle being won, I think, is having the right perspective. And if we're honest, Elisha could have prayed and won the battle in a second. But he realized the problem isn't what's important. What's important is our perspective. So in essence, Elisha prayed for heavenly perspective so that he would see victory in this and in every battle, all because of perspective. So today I want to give you two things that work together. If you can get these two things to line up, you'll have proper perspective. And when you have proper perspective, no matter what you face, you are always going to see a victory. There's two, time, two times in scripture where the enemy attacked perspective. And uh, the first attack is found in Genesis when the serpent comes to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, and the Bible tells us that the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And then he says to the woman, hey, did God really say you, sh you can't eat of every tree of the garden? And, you know, I, I want you to really look at this question because there's, there's two things that the enemy is trying to lie, us, lie to us about, right? And these two things have the ability to affect everything that you do. So the serpent's question is causing Eve to question, number one, who God is, right? 
and he's poking at her understanding of God. And he says, like, why would God tell you not to eat of any tree in the garden? Like, who does God think he is? I thought he loves you. Like, won't, why won't he fully provide for you? So, you know, th- this is a layered question because the first thing that he brings into question is, like I said, her understanding of who God is. And the second thing that he brings into question is her understanding of who she is. So in essence, he's asking her, why would God be worried about what tree you ate from? Maybe he's not really for you. Maybe you're not as good as you thought you were. Maybe you're not the creation that you thought you were. And in Genesis, uh, the Bible, the story tells us in chapter 3, right, that that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and, and the scripture tells us that it was to pleasant to her eyes, right? It was pleasant to the eyes and, and a tree that was desirable to make one wise. And the, then the Bible tells us that she took of its fruit, she ate it, and then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. And I want you to see, like, there's this connection between what the enemy said and what Eve saw. Because this reveals to us the way in which the enemy causes us to view everything. And what he does is he speaks a lie that then creates for us a lens that we view everything through. And this wasn't the first time she had seen the tree. And so we got to understand that whatever you believe, you receive. All right? And I think I could, I should probably say that again so you can take notes, right? Whatever you believe, you receive. And so now the enemy lied to her, right? And she received the lie. And the lie became the lens that she would look through. And this lie was twofold. It was about who God was and who she was. And if you fast forward all the way to the book of Matthew, the Bible tells us that Satan goes up to Jesus when he's in the desert and the devil, the devil tells Jesus, hey, if you're really the son of God, make these stones into bread. And here it is again. The same two things are brought into question. So if, if the stones don't get turned into bread, either God isn't able to do it or maybe you're not God's son. So the strategy that the enemy uses to cause us to walk in defeat is that he gives us a lie regarding those two things, right? Who we are and who God is. And the way in which the enemy succeeds is his lie becomes our lens. If you want to give yourself over to the enemy in battle, if you want to give your life over to the enemy, then go ahead and allow for his lie to become the lens that you look through. My question really is this morning, What lens are you looking through? What lies did the enemy tell you about who you are that you believed? If you're not careful, that'll become the lie that you receive, and it'll become the lens in which you perceive, and it'll change the way in which you view things regarding yourself and God. And so some of the things that the enemy tells us about who God is is, for example, like God is distant. Like, have you ever prayed for something and and it didn't happen? And it makes you feel like, like, man, like, God, are you really here with me? Because it makes you feel like God is distant, right? And we know he's not because the Bible tells us that he's everywhere. But that's how the enemy makes you feel whenever you're in a valley, so to speak. And I know the Bible says that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. But sometimes I feel like there's a disconnect between the verses that I know and the feelings that I feel and the things that I see. And so it's easy to go to church and shout, God is good and all the time and all the time God is good and I'm blessed and highly favored and and, and I'm the head and not the tail. But the enemy loves to slide up in your DMs on Monday morning and ask, if you're so blessed, then why are you so broke? And Satan also loves to tell us that God is inconsistent. And so he'll ask us questions like, why did that person get healed and you didn't? And, 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 And he'll say other things like, if God loves you, why is he angry with you? And let me just tell you this, right? Because if you live for Jesus long enough, then Satan is going to slither by on occasion, right? And when he does, he's going to set before you a lens to look through, a lens that is made up or fabricated by a lie. So Satan is going to bring into question your understanding of who God is, and then he'll bring into question your understanding of who you are and what he's telling you about who you are. Right. And, and, and let me ask you, that: what is he telling you about who you are? Because for some of you, he'll tell you things like 
bro, like you suck at being a Christian. Like there's no way God wants to use you, especially with the things of your past, like especially with with how you are with other people. You know, remember that time that you sinned? Remember that time last week that you were in bed with that person you ain't supposed to be with? Like, And so we know that the Bible tells us that whom the son sets free is free indeed, but you don't feel free, right? You feel bound to your past mistakes and your, your sin, and you feel like you're, like like you are your past and you feel like you are your addiction because you know what they say right once an addict always an addict once a cheater always a cheater once a liar always a liar right once a drunk you get the idea right and, and he'll tell you you aren't good enough why do you even try to preach you're not as good as Stephen Furtick there's no way <laughs> there's no way you're even as good as Mike Todd or even as good as that cowboy preacher that comes out on Facebook like why are you why do you even preach bro like what are you doing with your life or 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 maybe he tells you things like why are you even practicing you're never going to sing as good as 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 Pastor Lisa on stage you're never going to play the guitar as good as Pastor Jeremiah you're never going to be a, a, as good a musician as as that guy on the keyboards right like, you're never going to play as good as these guys. So just give up and go home. You're not good enough. And, I mean, they don't even need you, by the way. Like, look at them. They're stacked, right? And this is what the enemy does. And it wouldn't be so bad if you didn't believe it, right? You could just throw it off and it wouldn't affect you. The problem is that once you believe it, you receive it. And once you receive what the enemy says about who you are and who God is, your perspective is changed for the worse. You know, what you face isn't necessarily what you see. What you face, I'll say that again, isn't necessarily what you see. You could be in a good situation and know that God has put you there, but if you believe the lie that you're not good enough to be there, it doesn't matter how good whatever is in front of you or how blessed you might be. You can have the all-American family and God can be doing great things in your life, but if you believe the lie that you're not good enough to be there, you will miss out on God's promises. And all because you, you chose to agree with the lie of the enemy. Listen, if I believe the lie that says I am my past mistakes, that lie becomes the lens of my future and then it becomes the level of my expectation along with what I'm believing for is reduced because I believed the lie that says I'm not worthy of anything greater because I've, I've abandoned what has happened is I've abandoned the truth that says I've been cleansed and set free through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're single, you've probably asked yourself, why am I always in dysfunctional relationships? And I think, you know, the enemy likes to bring that into question. It's like, man, look at you. You don't know how to pick them. Um, I think a better question would probably be to ask, why do I keep dating morons? But uh, you see, if you keep looking for your future through the lens of your past or through the lens of your sin or your mistakes, your level of expectation is cut off at the brokenness of your past. And yeah, you might have had the abortion. Yes, you might have messed up. Yes, you might have slept with that person. Yes, you might have been bound and you might have been addicted. But the problem is, if you don't expose the lie, it'll change the level of expectation of your future. For example, if I see myself as a victim, then I'm, gonna, I'm going to live victimized. And God has already called me to be more than a conqueror. I'm not a victim. I'm victorious. And if you are in Christ Jesus, you're not a victim. You are victorious. And if I see myself through my rejected past, I'll end up rejecting others. So now you ain't got no friends because you keep everybody out of reach. And so now you're lonely because you filter your future through the lens of your past. And I think if, if we're being honest and if you're totally honest, you've got some things the enemy, uh, you, you, you've got some things the enemy, uh, that, that, that the enemy, I should say, has lied to you about. But this is where the word of God is so good, right? In John chapter 8, if you have your Bibles, go with me there to John chapter 8. And we're going to read in verse 31. The Bible tells us, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, and you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, verse 32 says, and the truth shall make you free. So what does the truth make you free from? It makes you free from the lie. So as I believe God's word, because we walk by faith and not by sight, the truth will make you free from the lie of the enemy. And the Bible teaches us that prayer is a two-way conversation, right? And God loves to speak over your life. He loves to speak to you. 
He loves to he loves to engage with us. He loves to be with us. The problem is that we often love to listen to the praises of man. In other words, we're tuned into the wrong station. And when you change the station, you'll change the programming, right? And so I have to daily make a choice to tune into the truth of God's word. And so here's what I hear. God is good to me. And, and that may not carry the same weight to you as it does to me, but let me tell you something. I remember when my dad passed away in 2007. He was only 57. He was a pastor. He was doing great things for the community. And it seemed like he was hitting his stride with a second win. And I remember being filled with so many questions when he passed away because I just didn't get it. I didn't understand why would God take away someone that was doing a good work. And I'll be honest, I was upset with God. I asked God, why did you take my dad? Why did you take away my teacher? Why did you take away my mentor, my pastor? And I remember clearly hearing God tell me, I'm your source, not your dad. And after the feeling of being supernaturally scolded subsided, I realized God is good to me. And God has always been good. And in that moment, the problem in front of me didn't change but my perspective did. So God reminded me his ways, they're not my ways. And I get to consistently make a decision to either trust an already defeated devil or to trust God who has conquered it all. And me, I've chosen to trust God and say, God is good. And not only is he good, but he's good to me. No matter what I'm facing, when things look bad, I can still declare that God is good and that he is faithful. Sometimes those situations where you feel like God isn't faithful, when you get through them, you'll be able to see that he never left. You might have strayed, but God remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you may not know the details of how you got through, but by the grace of God, you're still here. You haven't lost your mind. You cannot be defeated. Why? Because God is faithful and because God is good. Would you say this with me today? Right where you are, would you say, God is good to me? See, when I'm in a bad situation and I feel like I don't know where it's going and it feels dark all around me, I remember, you know what? God is faithful. And all I got to do is trust, believe, and obey. And the saying goes, let go and get, let God, right? We've, we've heard that throughout our, our, our entire Christian lives, right? Let go and let God. Let God have his way. You know what I want to tell you today? I, I want to encourage you, don't let go. Hold on and let God. That's what I want to encourage you to do. It's easy to let go, right? But holding on, right? Hold on and let him guide you through that sinking feeling. Let him guide you. Let him hold your hand through that storm. Hold on. He's going to supply you with the strength that you need, right? The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on him, right? Don't lean on your on your own understanding. Lean on God. Let him be your comforter, your counselor, your guide. Why? Because he knows your next step. He's the one that ordered them. And this is what happens when you change the station, right? What we talked about earlier. When you change the station to the radio, what you have done is you've changed the programming. And when you change the programming, you've changed your perspective. And the truth is, people are going to talk about you, right? They're going to lie about you. They're going to make up imaginary scenarios in their heads about you. All before they ever even think about praying for you, people are going to talk about you. And that's okay because God loves you enough to overlook anybody else's perception about you. And he loves you enough to even overlook your own perception about you. So what if I'm not where I want to be? Well, you know what? Thank God I'm not where I used to be. And I'm not there yet, but I'm growing, right? I'm learning. So the devil can go right back to where he came from because I've changed the station and I'm walking in the favor of God and I'm listening to the, to the, to the voice of God. And I've said it before, right? And I'll say it again. You ain't got to be perfect. If you want to follow God, you ain't got to be perfect. You just got to be present. For what? Be present so that God can fill you. Be present for God to empty you. Be present for God to refill you so that he can re-empty you. Amen? And, and if you receive what you believe, will you believe God's word for your life today? This message won't help you tomorrow, right? If you leave it here, if you leave it right there where you're sitting, this message ain't going to help you at all tomorrow. But if you'll pick it up and believe, 
It'll help you tomorrow and every day after that. This will become your lens of your life's journey. So with whatever circumstance you're facing, what do you see? Do you see defeat, victory? I don't see defeat. I see victory. I see Jesus Christ coming soon. I see people flooding the church. I see the lost being found. I see families being restored and people being healed. I see a revival like this earth has never known before. I see the people of God stepping up to the purpose God put up on the church. I see a church that's beginning to understand what we are called to do. I see preachers of the gospel I, and the hope. I see preachers preaching the hope that is Jesus Christ. Is the world seemingly falling apart? Of course it is. And I would even go out, not too far on the limb because it's not really going out on the limb, but I would go out on a limb as much to say the world is falling apart. But my main focus is going to remain steadfast on my Savior, not my circumstance. So what do you see? Perspective is almost always, uh, uh, let me put it this way, perspective is almost always going to be based on your personal experiences. It's going to be based on your values, your current state of mind, and many times on your assumptions. So in order to have proper perspective, you've got to have the proper source. And where do you find that source? You find it in the Bible. You find it in the Word of God. You find it uh, in God himself. And God has promised to always supply your need according to his riches and glory. So now that you know or have been reminded of this source, you get to declare God's goodness. You get to set your mind on things above as, he's, as he teaches us in his word. You get to do these things. You get to give him praise. You get to worship God. You get to live in the mindset of, hey, no matter how it's going, no matter what it looks like, I'm not going to walk by, by sight. I'm going to walk by faith. And this is having proper perspective. That's what you get to do. You get to ex establish and live, reside in proper perspective. And I want you to declare the words of this song. I want you to declare the words of this message. Declare that I will see a victory. You know, there's a song that Elevation uh, Worship wrote uh, a couple years back, and that song was called See a Victory, right? Because the battle has already been won. It belongs to the Lord. It's his. It's not yours to fight. It's not yours to struggle with. And so I want you to declare that for your life. And I pray that those words become a lens in your life. So that you'll begin to look at things according to the lens of God's word. And if you came today watching a program, if you, if you sat here with me throughout this time and, and, and all you saw was defeat in your life before, you can, you can walk out of wherever you're sitting right now seeing a victory. Not because your circumstance has changed, but because your perspective has been made proper. Hey, would you let me pray for you this morning? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your precious word. I thank you because you've given us an ability to not dwell on the things that we see, to not be moved by what we hear, or by what we, by what we feel, but you've given us an ability to live this life by faith and faith in you, God, because proper perspective needs to have a faith that has proper foundation. And so our faith is 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 on you god it's in you god and so lord i pray for everyone who's watching for everyone who's listening i pray that if they are going through a circumstance that is beyond their control i pray that they would learn to have the proper perspective enough to say you know what god because it is outside of my control because it's beyond me i know that it's well within the realm of who you are god and so today lord for all those who are hurting for all those who are sick, for all those who are struggling, Lord God. We give ourselves over to you and in return receive the blessings that you have for us. Healing belongs to us. Salvation belongs to us. Your promise is yes and amen. And if there's anyone within the sound of my voice who is, who is willing on their own heart, God, to follow you 
Lord, I thank you that your word declares that in order to be saved, all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And as they do that this morning, Lord God, I thank you for being Lord of their life and Savior of their soul. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you guys for watching again. Uh, we, we are so glad that you took this time to be with us on today. And if you have any questions concerning what you heard today or what you saw on the screen today, I would encourage you to reach out to us and send us an email at church at the experience dot faith and uh, give us a shout out, you know, holler at us, as they say. Uh, if you want to leave us a, a personal private message or direct message here on this platform, do so. Don't hesitate to reach out. We want to connect with you because we were not made, we were not created to live this life alone. We need each other. I need you and you need me. And so I want to encourage you, reach out and uh, make that effort to uh, come together. I know it's, it's a weird time that we're living in where it's not really recommended that we be together. But you know what? Where two or three are gathered in his name, God is there. And where God is, wherever there is God, I believe that his healing is there. His power is there. And, and so God manifests uh, his ability, or I should say God manifests himself so that we could have the ability to live in the promise of his healing and the promise of his word, right? And so again, thank you so much for being a part of today's message, for being a part of today's service. And, and we, we thank you again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.